We're speaking today with Katayun Bahrami, who is based here in the Bay Area. Um, a quick bio includes, Katayun Bahrami is a multidisciplinary visual artist whose work reflects memories from her home country, juxtaposed with her current reality. An Iranian female artist, her research activities include, or investigates the intersections of boundaries, identity, and women. By using memories from her past, Bahrami also works through a series, rather works through a series of photographs, videos, textile, and mixed media works. Farsi's handwriting also encompasses most of her art. Aspects of different locations, such as buildings, lakes, roads, or garden, become the draft of her work to create a moment of reflection for the viewer. Kati Bahrami, it's so nice to meet you. This is our first time. I'm so excited I get to talk with you. Um, thank you for participating in the Zemin Project with us. Really nice to meet you. And this is my pleasure. And thanks for having me. Um, so let's uh, let's get right to the questions. Um, there's a lot to unpack in your in your bio, just as far as the, the themes and the, the motivations in your practice. Um, I'm wondering if you can describe or maybe go into go in a little bit of depth in some a few of those concerns that are uh, that you write about in your bio. What are the what are the themes and motivations in your practice? Yeah, uh, as uh, you just mentioned, the main uh, uh, particular uh, uh, aspect of my work is female identity and boundaries. But as a woman who grew up in Iran uh, and uh, was facing like different kind of limitation and like moving to the United States uh, in a free country still have like so many other limitations. And these are really my concerns and uh, I try to portray them um, specifically um, in my work. And um, mostly they are based on my personal experience. Uh, and I really want to uh, talk to my audiences through my works, which are uh, mostly uh, videos and textile and heavy mixed media works. And, uh, some of the, um, like, I think I can mention it as like the most important thing in my work is uh, Farsi or Iranian poems, uh, especially the poet uh, Fur Karakzad. Uh, I use her poem a lot in my work and I really get inspired uh, with her poem because it's really, um, her words uh, are really uh, strong, powerful, and um, she was one of the uh, first uh, female uh, in my country that was like um, talking about different kind of taboos, and which is really I think I really appreciate her, and I usually work around her words, her beautiful words. Wow. Um, did you grow up uh, in a household where there was much attention paid to so literature, poetry, art? Like, was that something that was? Um, important to your parents, or was this something that you discovered on your own? Uh, actually, yes, yes. Both of my parents uh, are really into art, and you know, as a little girl, I was like surrounded by art. My my father is an engineer, but he always um, did like so many calligraphies, uh, poems, and uh, even he was really into uh, theater. And also my mom, she's a professional in crochet yeah. and I learned uh, from her. And yes, that's right. Uh, I learned like the basics from my parents and then I decided to choose art as my path. Wow. That's, uh, it sounds like a very um, just diverse and sort of uh, culturally just uh, rich environment that you grew up in. Um, I imagine was it uh, was it challenging? Was it difficult to leave that context to come to the United States for for school? You've been here. Uh, is it since twenty seventeen? Is that correct or earlier? Uh, actually, uh, two thousand fourteen. I moved. Okay. Yeah, I moved here with my husband, and it. I think one of the aspects I really want to portray in my work is that is this distance, which is. Um, of course, I choose to be here, yep. but I didn't choose to not see my parents. I want to, like, as, um, as a normal person from an, uh, any kind of country, to go visit my parents. But un unfortunately, because of the time, it wasn't um, like that for me and for 
so many other students like me, which are coming from Iran. And uh, it, is, it is really challenging. It is really, really challenging. And um, yeah, it is so hard because we have to deal like everything just by ourselves. Mm -hmm. we have any uh, support in like um, support of our families, uh, which I think uh, it's the most important in any person's life. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That makes yeah, that makes a lot of sense, and that's um, that's a, a experiential note I think that runs through many of the the interviews that we've the conver the interviews and the conversations we've had with Zemin Project um, the artists that we're highlighting in these interviews and also in the panels is this um, for many artists especially coming from Iran you, ha you haven't seen family and friends in in some cases decades and that's that's just a it's a really long time to be separated from family and yeah. imagine that um the the separation uh activated by um covid and quarantine made that separation potentially that much harder um i hope everyone in your family um is healthy and <laughs> you know and hopefully that they avoided this this terrible disaster that has fall, befallen the planet that but that uh, that everyone there is 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 healthy and that you know they're not you know struggling with illness on top of everything else yeah exactly thanks god they are they are healthy and but uh, still there are so many countries that couldn't uh, get the vaccine and they are still struggling with this like global issue absolutely yeah Let's see. So um, you were first at the University of Michigan. Is that correct? Yeah. yeah. So you come to it from both uh, like a, an arts administrative. So you have um, sort of a parallel uh, experience in the art world, both from an administrative perspective and now from uh, from a maker's perspective. Has that has have those two um, experiences like informed one another as you've been pursuing your MFA at CCA or just how you imagine how you exist in the uh, in the arts world generally speaking do those I imagine that those two experiences are very um, that they handily inform one another um, yes yeah. actually back in Iran I did my BFA in oh okay oh that's so, great okay yeah, then in tech and then when I moved to the US, I start, uh, I got my master's in museum studies. Uh, and afterward, I, um, I was able to work in the museum and see like the different levels of like how um, the art could be accessible to the public, to the community. And I think really, really helpful for me um, right now when I'm doing my MFA again, like. Um, like hands-on process and making. Yeah. It, it is super helpful because I think um, as an artist, it is really helpful to know like two ends of it, like, you know, how you show, yeah. how you make it. Like, yeah. I think I, it is really helpful. I'm going to show that. Yeah. It's a, it's, a, it's a really interesting perspective and it's not one that all that many uh visual artists have, both from the administrative and the practical side. But I imagine that the your experience knowing, working, understanding how museums work internally, both the, the successes and more often than not the institutional failures, the ways in which institutions fail artists, um, particularly uh, artists who are not white and who are not male. <laughs> um, <laughs> are not you know uh born in a western context necessarily i imagine that's uh that's a useful that's useful knowledge for you to lean into as you are charting this path as a as an artist as well so that's a it's a it's a fascinating context um so we're we're talking about uh connection and community and resources uh as they are manifest in the suwana community in the bay area um so when you arrived in in California, um, what was what were your first uh, experiences with um, others in the Swana community? Was that 
were these people that you sought out sort of immediately or did it take a little bit more time to find your way into that community? Uh, actually, my own experience in California, it, uh, it has like, again, <laughs> two different <laughs> categories. <laughs> like first, after graduating in Michigan State, I moved to California and I started working here. Yeah. And yes, that was great. Um, I, um, I get to know so many Iranian artists or like artists from other countries, which like it's known as a category yeah. or community. Uh, and uh, we had to make it like, we did a um, great, you know, relationship and uh, connection. And we attend so many galleries together. Yeah. Uh, but then um, second time when I moved to California, it was in the Bay Area. And it was exactly during the lockdown and when the pandemic hit the world. And this experience was super different from the other one I had in LA yeah. because um, as a new student, um, because I, I moved back because I wanted to go to California College of Art. Yeah. So I didn't know anyone. I didn't know any artists uh, from Suana especially. Yeah. And uh, also me and my cohort didn't have any chance to, um, to get to know each other or to like visit any galleries or museums, nothing. <laughs> so we had like, like all the people around the world, we had our classes online and that was it. thinking about, okay, now it's my um, turn <laughs> to make this community for myself. So yeah. I, and whenever I heard about anyone, um, for example, from my uh, friends or from my uh, professors, yeah. Ask for the contact information. Yeah. Then I contacted them and they said, Hi, I'm Patty. I just moved here. I don't know anyone. And then, for example, we had a Zoom meeting together, just get to know each other, or like we exchange numbers or we follow each other on media. Just this. So I think this is really important to like have this responsibility or like accountability as an artist to make your own resources and um, your own community, especially during, it was, I think it was super important to get, to force yourself yeah. to, yeah, to just go and reach to people and start making connections. Absolutely. Um, so you hit on one of the, you know, most important notions uh, that runs through Semin Project, which is resources. So. Um, when I, when I, when we talk about that and we think of that in terms of, um, you know, personal contacts or, or however you define resources, um, as relates to who you've encountered here in the SWANA program or in the, in the, rather in the SWANA community in the Bay area or, or anything else that falls under that category of resources. Like what comes to mind when I, when, when we talk about resources, what does that mean for you? Well, so uh, then, whenever I think about uh, resources, I I define it as a structure, as a structure like like for example a ladder, which yeah. um, yeah. people can step up and improve and get stronger. Yeah. And um, this is I think this is really important. These resource resources to be accessible for everyone. Yeah. Um, yeah, so I think um, for, for me, it's something that um, I can uh, get benefits of improvements. Nice. Well, it's, yeah. it's, it's interesting, um, and that's not even the strong enough word for that to, to, uh, as a descriptor necessarily, but that uh, you're, you're coming into the Swana community here in the Bay Area at a time when everything is, you know, everything is isolated. Everyone is isolated. There's no, we're getting, we're getting to that point. Thankfully, we're getting to that point. But when you arrived in 2020, like there just wasn't much of an opportunity for you to get to know um, just how many, like how many people are actually, you know, part of this beautiful, boisterous Swana community that's in the Bay Area. So it's, so in some ways, as we round out of, uh, 
quarantine and, and life starts to have, starts to feel um, familiar uh, in terms of its rhythms, the way that it did before we were all um, sort of tucked away in our own homes. Like there's, I imagine that there's um, more, there will be more people that you encounter that more meetings, more just, uh, through, you know, it could just be like dinners or, or exhibition openings, or it, even at school, like when you start attending CCA in person, um, that you'll have, uh, an even better idea of who exactly is part of this very large and beautiful <laughs> community. And that, I mean, that for me, that's just really exciting. Like it's, it's, uh, I, I, like for so many people who were in school in 2020, like I know it wasn't an ideal situation at all for anybody. Um, that you were separated from your cohort, you were separated from your, you know, out of your studio space. Like all of the things that were familiar to you, that were you were looking forward to in your graduate education, just you know that wasn't an option at that point. But coming out of that now, as you look at your I'm guessing it's your last year at CCA. Like it will be very different from your first year. And that's really exciting. That's very, that's, I mean, that's reason to be optimistic right there, I think. Exactly. Yeah. So like um, as a studio uh, art, a studio art student, yeah. it has a major, uh, you know, um, I don't know, major uh, element. Like, yeah. <laughs> as a visual artist you are it's really hard to not have in your studio not like or don't have access to a studio practice but um i think it would be great that they are open up now and they are uh, we have access to them like for a longer amount of time the week and this is great and um but i think we all learned a lot last year Absolutely. Like how fragile we are. Um, I think um, I really want to focus on my work and practice, yeah. but also something else. It's it become really important to me. Uh, and when I, when whenever I talk to anyone, I I want to mention it is our mental health. Because oh, yeah. yeah, because like it um, we didn't have any like connection other people we were like uh, kind of alone mostly at home and right now i have i think i know the value of like having friends and like families around and get the support yeah, yeah. So i think right now i'm thinking about like sitting on my work but <laughs> yeah. more than ever you know taking care of myself and my well-being yeah that's a that's a very important um concern mental health uh uh i i've certainly <laughs> wrestled with it in the last year i imagine and i know i'm not alone in that respect and i think the more we can uh normalize discussions of it the less people will feel i don't know alone or or isolated or um uh as though their particular struggles are uh not, not necessarily because they are unique to each person, but that they are that they are the only person struggling with this. And I think the more we can talk about this, the more we normalize it, uh, the easier it gets to talk about it, and the easier it is for people to seek the kind of help that they that they need and deserve. So I'm really I'm so glad that you that you mentioned that because it's 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 been an important discussion that's long overdue, and we're finally finally having it, which is which is very good. Um, yeah. So you were so you were a studio artist without a studio. You were working at home. Um, how did the last year uh, impact your creative output? Because then, in addition to just being a maker, like you're a student and you have certain there's expectations of students to produce even while you are, you know, not working in your studio. So what was how was that experience for you? Actually, that's a nice question. Uh, so, I, um, as a textile artist, because um, in, in somehow I'm a textile artist, so I need my floor link. Without my studio, I don't have my floor. I can't do. So that really, I and mean, that situation opened up so many other <laughs> windows. Yeah. I had to think about something to be creative. 
I start uh, start uh, photography. So I take um, actually to be honest, I should say myself out like in nature. Yeah. And I start taking photos like in the same theme I have like the female and their struggles, limitation, and uh, I uh, substitute like weaving with uh, crocheting. And then uh, I think that was successful. I like that. And maybe without the pandemic and without the lockdown, I have never, you know, tried that. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I'm a yeah. positive. And I think that was, that was really good to, um, I'm, I'm really satisfied that this cause that I tried this one. That's great. And do you think as the, as the second year of your graduate program, as that starts and you have more access to your studio, like, you know, it's just, it's a, it'll be completely different than it was last year. Do you want to continue with some of the ideas and projects, the things you were working on while you were at home, sort of working in your home studio, or are you working on different ideas at this point? Yeah, I think, uh, I wanna um, I wanna keep going and continue the yeah. project, uh, quest uh, which I already started and I want to uh, develop it like more for my uh, for my yeah final show uh, as a you know last year yeah um, wow. yeah <laughs> <laughs> that's as someone who I my, I've been obsessed with photography for I'm not a maker myself but for decades now. Um, I just, I love learning about work that was, that is new to me and that uh, just the opportunity to, to get to know uh, an artist's bo you know, body of photographic work is uh, just one of the things I look forward to the most. And so um, whatever you, I look forward to seeing, you know, whatever you produce and whatever you want to show with us or show to us, because that's, Thank you. Uh, you know, that's a, that's a gift that you give us. And uh, yeah. it's speaking, speaking on behalf of everyone who likes photography. <laughs> we, I, I, I especially am looking forward to it. Um, so um, yeah, uh, just that, that's, it, that's an exciting, that's an exciting path that you set yourself down on, I think. Um, um, all right. Well, thank you so much for, you know, speaking with us. And uh, like I said, I can't wait to look at your work. Um, one last question, Kati. Uh, what are you thinking about these days? Right now, what's the most, what's like foremost in your mind right now? Right now? Yeah. Uh, okay. Right now, uh, as a um, second year MFA, mm -hmm. I try uh, like every second of my day, I'm thinking about my project, yeah. my and um, I've been uh, busy with like mostly reading during the summer because um, you know um, uh, as as an artist who wants to focus on women and like their situation in different um, levels um, or like to be a feminist artist I really want to educate myself yeah so I start reading more books oh wow yeah <laughs> What are some of the titles that you have that have really resonated with you this summer? Yeah, I have them here, like Invisible Woman and also Walk Through Walls. Oh, wow. Okay. Yeah. yeah. But especially Walk Through Walls, I really love that. So I think um, for the fall, mm -hmm. I have to be prepared to write. So this is really important to educate myself more and read more articles. And uh, I can't wait to go to the studio and making. <laughs> oh. Well, I just, uh, uh, congratulations on just getting through an incredibly difficult year from multiple perspectives, um, but specifically man managing to maintain the creative engagement um, that's required of an MFA student and that it opened up this whole area of, of interest for you. And that I hope, yeah, I hope that as you get back into the studio, as you're at CCA, like it just, all of the, all of the, the enthusiasm and the energy and everything that comes out in this conversation, like that that carries you through the, the last year and that oh, nice. I'm really excited with what you produce. I know I'm looking forward to seeing it. So um, I hope that that is something that 
carries you through, you know, it will be a challenging, a year that'll be challenging in its own way, but, uh, but even more exciting just to see what comes of it, so. Me too, and thank you so much thank thank you. for uh, discussion. Um, I really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you so much. All right, um, well, thanks everyone for watching this interview and we'll see you here next time, bye.